the internet. Our lives ever since the inception of the internet have changed to degrees that haven't been seen in the billions of years on earth. It's crazy to me how comedy on the- God damn boy, you got the boy, you got that. <laughs> you got that Michael Jackson muff. He rocking that bitch though, he, he got it. Wait, hold on. Is this nigga in a fucking library? 15 years ago went from videos like this. To videos like this now. Like what the f even what happened between these years? Which is what gave me the idea to look back at these internet errors because people don't realize how fast we move on in the internet. Let's first start off with one of the most universally hated errors on the internet. You honestly couldn't pay me any amount to go back and live in this time. I don't even think it would be worth it. And what that time? is the Instagram clout era. Nigga, 2016? This nigga said you couldn't pay me to go back and live in 2016. The year that niggas... Oh my god, 2016? It was so goaded! <laughs> I mean, shit, nigga, I guess. Day living in this era brought me closer to just calling it quits altogether. The Damn, Instagram nigga. clout era was an internet era in time which pretty much consisted of this. People that were annoying as shit were being annoying as shit and becoming famous for being annoying as shit. Oh, that sums it up. Come on, I want to hear the clapping entourage. We can pretty much just end the segment right here. On the real, the Instagram clout era was a time between 2016 to 2019 where a group of random individuals would captivate the people of the world by doing shocking things in front of a camera. Then posting it on Instagram where people what would the watch and shit. Nigga, what the f with their friends laughing at how stupid it was. And did you hear how I said laughing at how stupid it was? People weren't laughing with them, they were laughing at them. They kind of made themselves the punching bag of the internet. It was also kind of like jackass, except way worse and not funny. Our main contenders in this category include people like Lil Tay, Bad Baby, Whoa Vicky, Boonk, Supreme Patty, Lil Pump, and others. And I like to say others because I don't- I, I can't even lie, bro. I did used to watch a lot of Boonk gang vids. Bro, you gotta understand, bro. I was like- like, I was 11 in 2016, bro. So when you just watching a random nigga run out of a fucking barbershop without <laughs> paying for a cut. Yes, nigga, in my 11-year-old brain, that shit was fucking hilarious, nigga. I remember half the names of these motherfuckers anymore. There was a bunch of these people that would use their odd looks as a gag, and that's all they offered. And they would always end up in each other's videos for some reason. What it was like fuck? this giant circle of clout demons siphoning from each other. Nigga, they still pop up in each other's videos. Bro, I just seen... I I just seen the mouth nigga the other day. Pause. Pause. I don't know that nigga name. Annoying, I would say it of all these people has got to be Boonk, Whoa Vicky, and Lil Pump. Boonk quite literally got famous for going into stores and f robbing them. <laughs> I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> to this day, there is no social media. I ain't that shit was insane. Like he did. Like when he went into a Dunkin' Donuts store and just yanked the rack of donuts, which got him on the this shit was. Or when he went into a store and recorded himself stealing a diamond watch. And last, when he recorded himself stealing a whole ass dog. I don't remember that. She's so cute. I don't remember that. She's cute as How much you want for it? Two. Two? Two thousand. What type of dog is it? Two thousand? Oh, shit. Fuck I don't, I oh. dead ass do not remember that. What the fuck, bro? It's not talked about enough how Boonk ruined a generation of kids by making them think stealing is a way to get famous and posting it on social media. Well, Vicky got famous for pretending to be black. Yeah, the stuff Well, Vicky. Dead ass, I don't know what Well, Vicky do or did. Or anything. She was out here fighting like a Spartan warrior to prove she was black. When the evidence was clearer than the sky, bitch didn't have a drop of melanin with. <laughs> bro, why is this nigga cooking these niggas like these, bro? God damn, what you got against all these niggas? Her presence was always weird to me in this era because you could tell she was trying <laughs> to imitate the stereotypical black girl. Before y'all say I'm exaggerating either, just look at some of these clips right here. You can't say I'm exaggerating. The next you gotta get the walk. I'm telling all y'all white folks right now, y'all niggas can show y'all badass kids. Cause maybe Jenny can get away with cussing y'all niggas out. But I'm telling you, if Shanique would try that shit with me, I'm gonna get away with cussing y'all niggas out. But I'm telling y'all badass kids. Cause maybe Jenny can get away with cussing y'all niggas out. 
Why don't I remember none of this shit? I don't remember none of this shit. She also dropped this classic diss track on Rice Gum, which I won't be playing. Number one, because of copyright. She dropped the diss track on Rice Gum? Nigga, where the f was I when all this shit was happening? Nigga, what the fuck was I doing in 2016? Let me think. Who was I watching? Chris Move, Dash EXP. I think my ass was still watching Markiplier. Just watch it and you'll see why I can't put it on this video. And last is the king of this no brain cell era, Lil Pump. I think Lil Pump was a true pioneer in all of the dog shittery that happened at the time. He really had all the new rappers coming into the industry questioning if they had to get face tats and colored dreads to make it. And to his credit, it happened for a while. There's a group of discarded SoundCloud rappers out there with permanent face tats I know they regret now. Hope Lil Xan's doing good. His Instagram posts were also annoying. He's the one that inspired these kids to be oh, obsessed shit. with flexing. Thinking their worth is- Oh hell nah, bro already laughed for almost an hour when I'm at work. Damn boy, working that job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, get that money, nigga. Nothing without a Supreme t-shirt or a Gucci hoodie or diamond chains. He also had all the little kids. Okay, like, this nigga saying this about pumping shit. All rappers of all eras do the same shit, gang. Literally, my nigga, they all, like, have, like, a certain movement, nigga. Bro, Sosa had True Religion and a Pelly Pelly jacket. <laughs> Pump, had, Pump had the Gucci. Who pushed the move for Balenci? DDG? Nigga, I don't fucking know. Lil Pump better than... Nigga, I will ban you right now. Take that shit back. I swear, nigga, I'm not playing. Take that shit back, nigga. There is not a single song in that fuck colorful rainbow head ass nigga catalog that's better than Sosa. Bro, I be forgetting, bro, your ass is from a third world country, bro. So you, you didn't even hear Sosa back in the day. I be forgetting, bro. My brain, bro, that's my bad, bro. I be forgetting you from a third world country and shit and your internet don't work. My bad, gang. Thank Gucci gang for that year, which was <sighs> beyond pain. Chat, don't get on his so ass too much. He's not from America, bro. I still can't believe the song has 1.1 billion views. Music must have been a disparaging drought for something new. So overall, this is probably the one error in this Love Love from Congo? No. Oh, wow, nigga. I was just joking. He dead ass is from... Oh, wow. There's so much more in these people, but this is about enough I can endure talking about it, and I highly recommend checking out Patrick CC's video that fully goes in depth on it. The last person I've ever seen survive this is Drewski, but even then, I don't know if that really counts. He kind of came into that era when it was ending, and he's just a naturally funny guy. I can't really Drewski say the rest funny for... as shit, bro. Whatever the f I was joking, I know. Next, we got another era that is also linked to ruining a generation of kids. AKA the 2016 YouTube edgy era. Now Huh? Oh, nah, nigga. I, nah, nigga. I wasn't on this side of YouTube, brother. Bro, like, 26... I'm trying to think back what I was doing in 2016, my nigga. In 2016, my nigga, I really wasn't even on YouTube like that. I was still fucking watching TV, bro. I'm not gonna lie. 2016 is when I started watching wrestling, nigga. So, I was not watching YouTube. Hold on. Dash EXP, Blasphemous HD, Markiplier, Jacksepticeye. Berlizzi wasn't... I mean, Berlizzi was out, but he ain't make his game and shit. He was just doing his funny shit. That's it, bro. Like, I wasn't Chris Smooth, my nigga, but I wasn't watching nobody else, my nigga. I wasn't really watching YouTube like that, bro. I'm gonna skip this, bro, because I, I don't know shit about this, bro. But another error that links directly to this one took over the filth that Musical.ly stars left behind. The TikTok dance era. Now, I was deciding whether I wanted to include this I mean, this shit's still it going the on. the exact same description as the music era but it does have some exceptions to it the tiktok dance era actually included more movement in the dances like using your hands throwing it back and really just any part of your what body the that fuck? can make a movement the what the fuck nigga no go back how is he doing that get back really just any part of this gotta be edited there's no way this nigga is spinning for that long the main contenders the here were charlie and dixie d'amelio addison ray bryce hall josh richards the lopez brothers etc and just like the musically era it was a group of teens and young adults making videos together which included dancing lip syncing and viral sounds i personally think it was more popular than the musically era because they capitalized on drama 10 times more i mean we can't forget about the disaster known as the hey i still ain't watched american Psycho. Chat. Do I need to watch this shit? Why am I asking y'all? Nigga, I know I need to watch this shit. Hype house. Which if you don't know, because let's be realistic real quick. No one over the age of 20 years old even knows what this is. Was a house consistent huh? of the biggest TikTokers at the time to record TikToks in. And all... Nigga, I didn't know about that. 
<laughs> shit. Bro, nigga, why am I so like negligent to all this? Bro, I don't know about none of this shit happening. Nigga, there was a fucking TikTok house. What was that? That was like 2019, 2020. My TikTok was literally just full of like anime edits. I'm a nerd ass nigga, bro. Y'all already know this. The social media blogs would eat up any drama produced from this garbage dump. I was just sitting there thinking to myself every time I saw one of these dumb stories from one of these drama blogs. Huh. I really don't care. To this day, I still don't know the demographic that was eating up this content, but it was working. We can use the Hollywood Fixes channel as proof. I like what to the compare fuck the is the Hollywood TMZ, Fix? Except more rundown, more elusive, more invasive, and I hate the guy's voice. He was uploading videos daily of these TikTokers, nearly stalking them everywhere they go. Each of them have millions of views as well, which shows there was some- I never support. seen none and of this shit, bro. Netflix got the idea to make the Hype House show. Well, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is the hype house? I've never seen a Netflix show more shit on by the masses than this one. I've I never, I Netflix swear to God, I've really never heard of this shit. Of teens who got famous for doing five second dances and lip syncing would be able to act. And you know this show is bad when it's rated worse than cuties out of all things. What the fuck is cute? Bro, this nigga got it. Nigga, hold on, nigga. Who is this bitch in the in the in the bottom right? Nigga, she kind of bad. I ain't gonna lie, B. How the f is that even possible? You can't recover from a wound like this. Just bleed out at that point. This era is pretty much dried up now, and the last time I've even heard of one of these people was when Charlie D'Amelio got passed by Kabi Lame to become the most followed TikToker. Next is a shorter era, but I just want to cover it a little bit. The World Star era. World star nigga, why didn't he cover this shit first? This era happened before any of these other ones. Known as World Star Hip Hop is a social media company. World for Star posting news, posting music on their channel and fight videos. Lots and lots of fight videos. There was a time where any time any minuscule fight happened on some random butt nowhere street corner, someone was pulling out their phone yelling. <gasps> World star! <laughs> and everyone from every conceivable nation would run down to see if a fight was actually happening. That's how much it was linked to fighting. It was kind of like the more tame version of live music. I just mainly didn't like this era because it started the stereotype of black people fighting all the time. It was like they were allergic posting any other skin color getting into uh, The setting was always the most hood, the most ghetto, the most run down area in the slums. This gave racist ammunition and they still use it to this day. I'm not lying. Go ahead and look at any I ain't glad he not lying about that. I just don't look at it like that, my nigga. I don't look back at World Star as like a negative thing or like some racist shit, bro. That's not how I look at that shit, bro. I look at that shit as damn, bro. That was a time where niggas was getting their ass beat and put up on the fucking net, bro. Literally, if you got your ass beat back then and it got put on World Star, you're cooked. It's over, nigga. I ain't gonna lie. You gotta, bro, you gotta move towns or something, bro. Twitter account that posts fights on the daily. Look at a video of black people fighting. Then look at a video of any other race fighting. And come back to tell me which comment section is worse. It'll be bursting what comments like. <laughs> and these are the people who get to have rights. Typical. What else do we expect from them? Huh. But black lives matter though, right? I am full-fledged putting the blame on Worldstar for this. I don't remember those comments. I promise you, I don't remember those comments, my nigga. I remember comments like, damn, that nigga just got flipped. That's the comments I remember, nigga. I don't, nigga, I don't remember no racist comments. Next is an era that bring out the most garbage people that platform has ever seen. The vlogging era. YouTube vlogging has always been a thing since the... This don't make no sense. Number one, gang, niggas still vlog. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't this nigga saying this like the era's over nigga. This shit is still going on This shit is really never going in to be honest What the fuck was bad about the vlogging era other than the Jake Paul? But like bro, you can't blame one nigga for the whole era being bad, bro Like what? what? But let's be real, 2012 to 2019 was the peak of YouTube vlogging. It was a time where people would be posting videos daily of them doing things. Oh uh, yeah. Hmm, I wonder what type of disaster Shout out DDG. this could lead to. Recording every action done throughout the day and posting it online? Now at the start, it wasn't too bad in my opinion. You had gems like Casey Neistat or Roman Atwood vlogs, which I don't think get enough credit. But enter the Paul brothers, enter the clout house, and they leveled this bitch to the oh, ground. Shit. I remember when Jake Paul was actively recording the Team 10 household and it was just disaster after disaster. They function together so bad that there's a video going over their worst moments with 24 million views. I ain't gonna lie, I ain't watched them niggas. I was just watching like DDG, Mega McQueen.
Shout out Michael McQueen. Genuinely just an asshole who showed it on camera and got famous. And it was the same thing with Logan, the Cloud House, and a lot of these vloggers. I don't know what type of ego they had in their minds, but it was pumping in their brains hard. We can't forget either that this era caused one of the most controversial YouTube scandals that happened. Hey. Oh, no come back like Logan Paul. At the time vlogging was blowing up also, it was becoming more and more easier to use your phone as a piece of equipment. So kids were trying to be like their favorite YouTube vlogger, Jake Paul and recording videos to hopefully become famous one day. That's why I blame this era for kids wanting to be YouTubers when they grow up. Like, bro, I was thinking astronaut or doctor and you choose vlogging? And I know that sounds hypocritical coming from me, but at least when I was younger, I wanted to be an astronaut and I failed, so f*** you. Next is an era- This nigga just said that, like, trying to become a YouTuber is such a bad thing. Nigga. YOU A YOUTUBER! YOU GOT TWO SILVER plaques. Now, as a little nigga that low-key did, like, okay, my first ever dream in life was to make it to the end. NBA. That shit ain't work out, my nigga. But I never really wanted to be no vlogger. Then I started watching Berlin's go live. That's where the dream began, bro. NFT slash crypto era. Okay, this shit was actually stupid. There was a certain time not too long ago where crypto and NFTs were on the rise. First, it was crypto with every coin out of nowhere 10xing, giving the worst type of people out there money. Then it was NFTs that followed after, which gave another group of horrible people out there unlimited cash to spend. From this to this to this day, I still don't know what the fuck. An NFT is. First started happening, everyone was kind of shocked. It was normal people becoming multi-millionaires overnight. So it made a huge demand for things. And with the demand comes people to take advantage of it. You had every crypto coming out of the book and promising people that it would 10x them soon. Soon they'll be going to section eight to living on a private island in the Bahamas. <laughs> Dogecoin, Ye coin, spank chain. What the Neon fuck is Ye coin? I found from one search. And I don't know what the f was happening, but it, it was working. People were actually betting their life savings on Dogecoin. <laughs> Coin, praying that it would take them out of poverty. Taking yeah, Elon right. Musk's word as gospel on any time he mentioned it. Then celebrities and influencers the would fuck? be taking any bag from these crypto <laughs> the places fuck? to pass out the garbage. Unlike now that we know they're a scam, people didn't back then when it was new, when people got their entire lives ruined. What truly confirmed the whole scam aspect to it from influencers was Save the Kids. Baze is still in a downfall from it, but I honestly, Oh, I, I remember this. I remember this. I remember this. I remember this a little bit. It was the same thing for NFTs of I saw a lot more mainstream celebs trying to promote it. For some reason, a lot of celebrities love the board ape, which I can't help but to feel happy about. No matter how much richer they are than you or more famous than you, at least you didn't buy a board ape for $500,000. dollars I, st are worth I still don't know. Like, what gang? What is an NFT? I'm going to look that shit up. Non fungible token is a unique digital asset. But what the fuck does it do? It represents ownership of real world items like art, music, videos, and more. Huh? Solid two tin cans and a butt now. I used to think what? were smart when I was younger, and this time period just proved to me how much I was lied to as a <clears> child. <throat> there were also hundreds of influencers and celebrities coming out with their own NFT projects. Yeah, I've never seen one of these succeed for the people that bought them, so... But I feel like NFTs were more obviously stupid to the public because you're just buying a picture that anyone can screenshot. Even the dumbest of the public questioned the validity of that, saying, yo, with a, this, this, this is kind of dumb. But crypto coins, though, people definitely fell for it more because it seemed like an actual investment, and that's just kind of sad to think about. And this last era I'm going to talk about is one we're actually still in right now. The Matrix era. Uh, nah, 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 we are. Uh, kinda, kinda. This shit really ended last year. No Nobody is still watching Andrew Tate, at least I fucking hope not. I know we're technically still in this era, but I can already see this being certified as horrible for the future generations to come. Andrew Tate truly changed the landscape online for good. It's so weird because he's so ingrained into social media as of now that I don't even remember a time when people weren't talking about it. The time period I'm talking about though was when he was blowing up and his clips were absolutely everywhere. You can't even that lie, shit there was, was a certain crazy. point where you couldn't ignore Andrew Tate. You had his long John Silver schlong dick writers in his comments always saying the what? same thing if it was a clip of him on tiktok it was a comment like comment tate w if it was someone disagreeing with tate it was the comment what color's your bugatti though now that the dick writing like that is stopped i'm at the point where i think these weren't even real human beings i think they were bots that were programmed with those two lines and that was it i truly hated andrew tate's dick writers more than him a lot of times it's not like the evidence is erased either i guarantee if you go to any old tiktok from when he was blowing up you'll see comments like that and then you had people like sneako pop up who are an exact representation uh, of what happens when you take the tape off. I don't think I ain't gonna lie, nigga. Nah, nigga. 
Sneeko didn't pop up on my shit, nigga. Every time that nigga pop up on my TikTok, bro, I have to swipe past fast this shit, bro. Anything that come out this nigga mouth is just like the most insane shit you gonna hear that day. Like, and you you just gotta scroll past, my nigga. Anyone who was watching Sneeko would have guessed the route he would take for content in the next year. He's also that pure example of why I call this the Matrix era. Any nanoscopic type of problem that happened was the Matrix's fault to him. It was only until Moist Critical Act actually had a decent conversation with him that I think he realized, huh, yeah, maybe maybe some of this shit just, just isn't the Matrix fault. Which to any normal person would have been obvious as hell. The lingo has also carried on to regular folks, and you got teens in high school saying, The Matrix, the Matrix is after me, and take this spin facts, you're just mad. Buddy, you work at Walgreens as a cash register. The Matrix is not out to get you. Is this nigga not gonna talk about so? The nigga who started this whole shit? Is he is he not gonna talk about him? And also bring this new epidemic of alpha males trying to copy Andrew Tate's So this nigga not gonna talk about so what the fuck nigga how you not gonna cover the nigga that started this whole shit this nigga really not gonna talk about so illuminati nigga nigga your video is about to end in 20 seconds i've got which i think either aren't missed or won't be missed all right bro i'm getting off this shit